Hi everyone, this video we're going to talk about frame rate or frames per second or FPS. You can see it here because in footage imported into Premiere Pro, this one says it's 25 FPS frames per second. It gets referred to as the frame rate. And the easiest way to understand frame rate is to look at a flickbook. So this flickbook here is uh, obviously a lots of single drawings. Okay, let's have a quick little look. Um, this one here is really cool. Uh, um, tutorial. Uh, animation. Okay, how to make a flickbook. But basically drawing every like every frame okay remember our frames is just a, a singular point in time okay a little snapshot okay and he draws every single one of them but if you run them together let's have a little look oh, where are they okay watch if you run them all together all those frames it starts looking like real motion let's go back to it there you go cool huh So that's probably a frame rate of about five or six or seven, okay? Seven frames per second, us as clever humans, we can see every frame, okay? We can see the jumpiness of it all, okay? We can see that it's a non, there we go. So it's a bit jumpy. But if you go, if you run that a bit faster, okay? The humans aren't so smart. We can get to about 25 frames per second and we all feel like it's live action, like happening right in front of us. So let's have a look in Premiere Pro. Okay, so I know that if I pause it here, I'm not moving. And if I go one frame ahead, I move it a tiny, oh, which one? I'm going to click down here. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut left and right. Okay, just go forward one. Look at that. Look, that's another one. That's another one. That's another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. So if I speed this up, I'm smashing away at the old keyboard. Eventually, if I can hit that 25 uh, times in a second, it looks like this. So that's the frame rate. Collection of stills run fast enough that us clever humans can't tell the difference between a collection of images and actual live right in front of us happening right now. So how did that go? It's a hard thing to understand. Um, I guess probably the, let's talk about the different standards. The standard at the moment is probably 25 frames per second. Anything digital is normally either given to us at 25 or expected to 25. Now the cool thing about it though is you can be at this level, uh, you know, of Premiere Pro production. It doesn't really matter what you get or what you export. Okay, uh, things like social media and websites will accept any sort of frame rate. Where you have to be concerned is if you are shooting to a like production schedule or at least uh, some specifications that says I want from you 4K at 24 frames per second. Then you have to be a bit more specific. Lots of cameras, you can go into the settings and pick the frame rate, okay? All kind of digital video cameras, DSLRs, uh, cell phone cameras, all have some sort of option, often to increase it, okay, increase the frame rate. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, I went and gathered some stuff with uh, strange frame rates, okay? Now this one here is 30.06, okay? This was this me walking with my headphones. Okay, so this, why is that one a weird frame rate? Um, cell phones often have what's called a variable frame rate. Okay, it changes over time. Okay, to get the both basically get the smallest file size it can. Okay, so you've got this weird size. This was shot for our wedding. Okay, um, this one shot at a really strange frame rate. Okay, so what is it? Twenty nine point nine seven six. Another really random one. But what ends up happening is all of this stuff. If you've got, you know. You can't reshoot this at a different frame rate. It would be lovely if we told everyone shoot everything at 25 frames because there is a tiny, if I drag this onto my 25 frames um, per second timeline, let's go to the Mountain HD. I add this one here. Okay, it's not quite the same. It's the same size, but the frame rate is going to be adjusted um, to be this 25. And there's going to be, I don't know, you have to be a pretty purist and it has to be some pretty amazing footage to start with to notice the difference, but there is a difference. Dumping 23 on a 25 will convert that 23 into a 25. But I just want to, I guess, I don't want to get you scared. Okay, at this level, before you get into more advanced stuff, it doesn't really matter. You can export it, drag all of this onto the same timeline. And when it exports, it'll export as 25 frames per second, because that's what we told this HD sequence here. Okay, to be 25 frames per second. Where things get a little bit more useful for you and um, when you are getting started at this level is something that's um, like 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second. You can shoot really high frame rates and you can do some really cool slow-mo but we'll do that later in the course. This is just like an introduction to frames per second because we're in this kind of like technical understanding section of the course. 
That's why when you make a new sequence, there's all these options in here to say, uh, let's have a look at, let's look at NTSC, okay, let's look at standard one. This one is 29.97. This is what TV in America used to look like. Okay, it doesn't work the same way anymore. Okay, because it's digital and satellite. Okay, and this is what it did in my part of the world. We use PAL, okay, which was 25 frames per second. Cinema, if you go to the movies, they use 24. You're like, why are we still using 24 there? I don't know. There's all these rules that are kind of often legacy rules. Somebody picked 24 for cinema. Somebody else has picked 25 on a digital camera. And we've all got this kind of mixed up frame right now. There's a little bit more consistency now. 25 becoming more or less the standard. But 29.97 and 24 is around. But again, uh, using 25 is a good all round standard unless you've been asked specifically otherwise. All right, I hope that helped understand what frames per second is and we'll use it to our advantage later on when we do slow-mo. All right, that's it, let's get into the next video. All right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give the video a like, consider subscribing to the channel here and also if you wanna go a bit further with Premiere Pro, consider checking out my Premiere Pro Essentials course. There is a link in the description. Bye now.